Welcome to Grimm's. I'm Grimm. So good to have everyone with us again. Hi. It's been a little yeah. bit, yeah. so it's really good to be back. So yeah. Before we dive into this coming session, because this could be a big one, as can the next few coming up, yeah. we're getting closer to the end of this arc, uh, we are going to have to go back through and just make sure that you recognize all of these people with their drink bedraggled faces <laughs> at this point in the story. <laughs> I barely started. <laughs> oh Hi, I'm Mark. That's and Mark. I'm deeply offended. <laughs> yes. I've been playing Anovarius, the half-elf dead guy, I guess. So we'll oh. see what happens. Half-dead elf. <laughs> I'm Lisa. I'll be playing Zarelia, who is still alive. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Awesome. I'm Chris. I'm gonna be playing Baltic Sin Stalker. Sounds like this. She's a big mentor guy and he's cool. I'm so very cool. And yeah, I am Saren. I am playing Tink Tulula Tinkerton. And Yay. she is the little gnome crazy is a tensioner. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> so we know who our players are. We know who our players are playing. Now Let's do a little bit of a recap, Thank because you. Uh, <laughs> it has been a fair while for us, um, and we are dealing with some plots within plots kind of yes. thing. Everyone's kind of playing their own game, and there's multiple parties involved, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go over everything real quick. You guys were given an assignment by Gilderoy and the rest of the um, Council of the True Pact to go and find a riot mage who was rumored to be hiring people to him out of uh, the Gore House in order to unleash a Havoc Festival on the Mitz and bring it down. You guys went in to eliminate this riot mage and found out that when you got to them that it was actually Zoralia's father, Hewitt. Yay. Twist. Yay. Yes. Booyah. You <laughs> got into a little bit of a scuffle with him. So did Anavarius tried to chase him down, but he managed to split apart from you guys and he went down into the deeper layers of uh, Rakdos territory and you guys fought through area after area to kind of reach him where he calls his home. Um, when you got there, he actually came to you to kind of congratulate you um, and that's when you started to suggest to him that you might be open to joining his side. And uh, when you said you were kind of open to maybe pulling some kind of betrayal on your team in order to get in with the, with the winning side, um, that was when you guys kind of came up with this plot, this little idea where he was going to go and have a business meeting with the three other uh, big players in Rakdos because he needs an army in order to go and attack the Mets. Um, so what he was going to do was have you guys call him out in a challenge that he effectively couldn't refuse without undermining his entire position as the head of a Rakdos troop. Mm. Uh, they just wouldn't respect him if he uh, turned your offer away. The thing was, is the same way that you guys would trap him into that deal, he was going to trap his business partners. So you guys said, hey, we'll challenge you. If we beat you, you actually join us and you do what we want. That's right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if he yeah. beats you guys, you guys actually join him in his attack on the mitts. Yeah. That was the... Either way. Yeah, that's fine. It's good either way. Oh, <laughs> that was yeah. the agreement that you guys struck. And then at the same time, he ended up going, okay, well, if I'm caught in this thing, well, you, he was having a hard time negotiating on a price for three separate armies mm. from people who he couldn't really convince yeah. to uh, join him on this little escapade. All three of them, uh, Jury is known for his review, so he's already got uh, as much money and influence as he needs. And Yasser is in charge of the Gore, Gore Hall, so he, he's already known for... He's got his shtick. And uh, Judith is a very well-known, very, very popular Scourge Diva. Oh, yeah. So they're all kind of known for their own <laughs> separate stuff. They don't really need to prove themselves or potentially gain any reputation by being the destroyers of the myths, unlike uh, Hewitt, who has kind of just been like a solo guy. And so he's not really known for anything outside of himself. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't really bribe them with reputation gain, so he had to pay mm. straight up for their armies, which he couldn't afford. And that's why he said, okay, well, if they're going to pull me in on this deal, why don't you get in on this action? We can't agree on a price. How about I'll pay you what I can, and if I win, well, then I get the army for that price. I get all, all three armies thrown in for that price. And if I lose, well, you could just take that money, and I get nothing. And so 
everyone being kind of in this precarious position where they would look like uh, buzz kills if they didn't kind of join in on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's this now kind of like shifty, weird, interlaced kind of uh, negotiation with a few things hanging in the balance. Um, I'm so confused. (laughs) You're so confused. (laughs) All right. If Throw a monster at I, I, I understand. Uh, but I did get out of the thing, uh, the mind crazy thing first. Yes. So I did prove myself to that. He was a dick. He wants to kick a bunch I'm of ass, and we want him to not. So we're gonna beat him up and take his army. Oh no, I know that, but, but like, kind of all of the crazy layers of like mm-hmm. sorting out agreements mm-hmm. and craziness. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you, I guess you've just kind of been going along fighting stuff with the oh, with yeah. the group, kind of mm-hmm. like. I hope there's a workout in the end, because <laughs> mm. really it's been Zoralia who kind of put Hewitt on this track, and then Hewitt has been the one who's kind of, like, operating it so that he can kind of play different aspects off of each other. Yeah. Effectively, he has found a way to potentially win three armies that he otherwise couldn't afford as Plus long as he us. beats you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and if he beats you guys, then he gets to do the ultimate insult, which is take four of the... Or Three of the chosen, of the uh, of like two. the, the mitz. <laughs> oh yeah, he gets two. <laughs> two of us. This deal is a not. I'm dead. Still, yeah. Tink's amazing. Yeah. She might not know what they are doing, but she's there <laughs> yeah, for her tank friend. Tink without a tank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. She doesn't need a tank. She's the tank. So it's you right. guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> All right. In its simplest form. If you guys beat Hewitt mm-hmm. in a in a little small scale battle, you will actually diffuse a havoc festival, which otherwise will cause huge amounts of havoc, which you guys otherwise couldn't stop by yourselves. Mm-hmm. So this deal is allowing you guys to be more effective. You guys are being able to punch up. The problem is, is that you guys being able to punch above your weight is actually what's allowing Hewitt to do the exact same thing if he wins. Because mm-hmm. normally, the other three people aren't really interested in selling their troops uh, for what he can afford until you guys kind of came into this deal. Now, if he wins, he gets three armies at a hell of a discount, and then he gets to kind of lead the attack and destroy the mitts, and all the spoils are his. Cool, cool. Can you dumb that down a bit? (laughs) (laughs) We get it. One more time. (laughs) We get it in time. Yeah, no, we get it. We get it. We're real good. (laughs) The details of the plan... And all the strange relationships therein have been outlined. We're gonna die! <laughs> yes. And now we get yeah, into yeah. where we actually left off. <laughs> you guys just finished facing off with the second uh, monster that you guys had to defeat in order to prove that you guys were even worthy enough uh, for Hewitt to, to accept your challenge in the first place. I mean, you guys might have won the race course and the carnarium, but people do that literally every night. It's still a special thing, but there are a lot of special people who come through, and uh, you guys are just kind of the the latest batch. So, um, <clears throat> where was I going with that? I kind of got lost in my own <laughs> out there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's very, to kill very sad. And Andy's dead. Yeah. That's right. So uh. you guys uh, couldn't just throw out the challenge. You actually had to prove that he had to spend some time accepting it. And that's why you guys had to fight the Sire of Insanity as well as the Dread Slag. And it was against the Dread Slag that Andavarius was actually convinced to let go of the hold on his soul. And the Dread Slag just kind of took the opportunity. Mm-hmm. It duped him into it rather than kind of terrifying him out of it, which is its normal course. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, even though you saw, like, through the kind of fear of it and came out stronger, it got you from a different angle and you still like let your spirit go. Yeah. And just like, ow. Nice. As the radio was holding him. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. With all the help in the world. And she just said that she loves him for the first time. Yeah. And then he died immediately after. <laughs> yeah. Aww. It's even more sad because you didn't even know what like was going on in his head to think yeah. that like yeah. he was so happy <laughs> and felt just so like, loved. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we pick up is with Zoralia having screamed uh, and infusing it with magic and pain and and shattering not just the dread slag which you injured but kind of creating a massive <laughs> crater in the center of this uh, 
of this like pit and, and cracking of walls and the lights are kind of coming apart and uh, some of the undead like lantern bearers that are hung from the walls through spikes they've like tumbled off and now they're just zombies biting at people's ankles there's a bunch of uh, there's a whole lot of concern people are just Oh yeah, and everyone's Jaws. scared of us. Well, yeah, because yeah. normally you unleash the dread slag in order to see people's dirtiest secrets before they go. Um, this is a very unusual circumstance where they're like, oh great, now I'm an audience member who knows all of their most embarrassing stuff, and these are terrifying people. So there are a lot of people who are like, ha oh, putting the mask back <laughs> on, like, <laughs> 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 oh, walking out. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the people who aren't completely stunned, they're getting up, they're excited, they're talking amongst each them, each other and themselves, they're they are panicked, there's a whole lot of emotion, but people are filing out of this room. You seem particularly volatile, <laughs> uh, because like some of the benches are cracking and, and the walls are splitting open, so people are getting the hell out. The only people who are sitting, anchored in place, and who seem completely unfazed, are the four main players in this little deal that you're involved in. You have Hewitt kind of looking down at the survivors, the group of you down in the pit, and then you have Jury, Judith, and Yasser. Uh, at that point, my beetle Gaston, oh, yeah. a little big beetle, oh, yeah. he's gonna pop out of my mushroom stalk staff that's just lying on the ground, lifeless now, and he's gonna pop up. He's gonna go you know, through my fingers as he used to do and just, go up to my body and curl up under the chest in my armor and immediately start biting it, start digging in and start to decompose because oh, that's what he does. You're not making this better. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> if, I see, yeah, if I see that when I'm like, going towards, I will like kind of grab Gaston Try and if he's holding on to his skin, I'll try and like, rip him off a bit just to make it <laughs> just be like, it's okay. You can, you can do your job it after. After, I understand you. It's okay. Yeah. Do I remember where I was physically when this happened? Like, what my peer's positioning was? I'm trying to figure out where I was at the end of it. Of yeah, we just finished the, the thing, right? Like, the yeah. main fight. Yeah, where, where was I standing? Were we just hanging out standing and talking? Or did something happen? The fight has just ended. Right. I I'm just trying to think of what shattered I did. the shit out of this yeah. place. Yeah. I don't remember how I ended, but, um, yeah, it doesn't matter anyways. I was gonna use that. I'm gonna go over. To I'm gonna take a look at Andy. What does he look like? Um, he. Like, you, you actually uh, notice how pale he is, kind of for the first time. Um, a mushroom in sheep's clothing. <laughs> oh yeah, he's in his sheep's. Clothing. He's still in the sheep outfit, which at this point is just ragged. It is just ripped and torn and stained. I'm, I'm gonna take a look bloody. under the sheep's clothing. Is he like? Is he? He's obviously wearing armor and stuff underneath it's, it, right? Okay, I'm just gonna unzip the sheep, sheep's clothing for the sake of dignity and just start to take it off my friend and use it to wipe down the armor a little bit. And then yeah. I'm just gonna ball up the sheep's clothing. That's really I'll throw it in my backpack. Of you. you should not be buried like this. Uh. Buried? Should he be buried? He's he's a Golgari. There's they come back from the dead. Yeah, they like make zombies. Come back from the dead! Hold on, Come hold back on. from the dead! Uh, <laughs> that sentence and that thought process don't seem to. Um, it is like when you say come back from the dead, do you mean like um, like as a zombie, or do you mean like um? He would be like the same, just like this. Decomposed. Oh. <laughs> I think I don't know how it works. I only know how it works for us. Like, we put our brains in jars and hope... Gonna do our history check real quick and see if I know anything about this. <laughs> yeah. I'll help too. Oh, aid. Actually, yeah, yeah, aid. if you want to get in on the history check... Okay. Um, wait, you wouldn't have to do a history. You know Gregory. Yeah, you I don't necessarily seen know him. A, a lich. Oh, oh that's better. Oh, yes. That's better. You yeah, actually, so I, forgot, I forgot that there's liches. <laughs> So what kind of check is this? Um, it? this wouldn't be history because you didn't remember him. Make it arcana to see if you can kind of oh. understand oh, uh, what's involved in actually oh. making a lich rather than just a zombie. Okay, so what, what would I roll if I wanted to kind of assess the same thing after I heard that conversation and my memory starts working today? Should I be like mm. medicine, history? Is it like an aiding me or no? Yeah, go. Uh, you aided me to get the... You, the, you're oh. Boros, mm -hmm. do religion. Religion, okay. Ooh. So it's... 
Yeah. I got a dirty 20. And it doesn't matter. 17 nice. right away. <laughs> okay. But still get 17 on religion. You've got the dirty 20 for I your got a arcana. On arcana as well. All right. We got this. So we got this. You're the one who brings up the idea of hey, this guy's a Golgari. It's the most normal thing in the world for them to die. Well, it's normal for literally everyone to die. But it's the most normal thing in the world for them to come back. Yeah. Yes. You bring that up. Tink, you're kind of caught up in the idea of like zombies or you're imagining uh, what he did to the... (laughs) Yeah, your your mind kind of focuses on artifice, more mechanical and cold metallic means of reinvigorating like a body. Uh, But you remember the family that he brought back and the way that he brought them back. They yeah. didn't come back as like a couple that oh, yeah, I was offered to, that, you know, host. I was one of the ones that went and saw a zombie thingy. Yes, they I were like, at the Bulgari Rock okay. Farm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you have mechanical means in mind because as far as you're concerned, the only things that you've seen as far as necromancy comes yeah. is they're like thralls, mindless zombie-like creatures. Yeah. Um, oh, when I remember that and the rock area, like the rock caves and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna check on his person to see if he has any like weird like zombie thingies. <laughs> or like weird That's fair. like weird like other weird bugs. So you find a jar them. with a thing with an eye cool. attached in the middle of it that has like fungal mm-hmm. growths and vines that are in it. Nice. And it's uh, starting to grow a lid for that eye that blinks even though it doesn't have to and, it, and the lids are made of different Ooh. mushroom caps coming together. Okay. Yep. So you find that in a jar. Weird stuff, Andy. Got it in a jar. <laughs> I will hold on to it very safely and securely. Mm-hmm. Now, with your arcana, you realize that Andy had actually spoken to Grigory about his his form, his lichdom. Um, and it doesn't just happen by accident. It does take uh, a lot of kind of forbidden very esoteric, deeply, deeply secretive, like closely guarded necromantic secrets. As often as it happens, um, it is still a privilege that isn't just extended carte blanche to every member of the Bulgari. Otherwise, their their ranks would just be so full of immortals scheming against each other, they really only leave it for the best among them. So, you, you know, from a magic standpoint, this isn't like a go to the nearest merchant and buy a soul, and then turn him into a lich. You know that there are magics at play here that you're going to need a very, very specialized person for. Grigory does actually come to mind. He's someone who both knows it, and who would actually be willing to help, most importantly. Because even if you found a hundred other, you know, undercity liches, they'd be like, no, screw you. The price would be too high. But you know a place to go, and that it can be done despite what's happened to him. From your religion check, from your religion check, Baltic, you understand, um, rather than looking into the magic side and whether it can be actually done, the Boros focus more on should it be done. And the thing is, is that... um, Underworld liches, and liches in general, because the Demir even have a form of lichdom as well, where they can keep their minds uh, after their bodies have died and kind of keep the soul anchored to it. There is a reason why those two guilds are associated with a certain amount of dark magic. And it's it doesn't just get used and it's like, oh, it's a tool, it has no flavor. Yeah. No, it indelibly like and unavoidably leaves a mark. They have a type. They are psychic vampires, necrosages. Underrealm liches are, um, they don't just get to live, and, and they can live on their own, but they almost become disdainful of competition. Mm. Um, they end up reviling life, a lot of them, because it's what took them from it in the first place, and and the area that they end up doesn't seem to be the best for anyone's mental or spiritual state. So you can only handle so much of it for so long kind of deal. Yes. They live technically forever, and a lot of them should not. <laughs> um, no, not much of a life. 
After a certain yes. point, okay. So you get a whole bunch of like Borosian propaganda back yeah, in your yeah. head on like the dead stay dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you've got one Sometimes life and that's what's normal. And when yeah. you come back, it's with black magic and it does bad things yeah, to you. Yeah. Fair so enough. that's kind of what you get, whereas you see that it is very possible and you actually have access to an inside source who can make it a reality. What what did you roll for? Uh, I rolled for Arcana too, but mine was a 12. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. She, she's kind of tangled up on. in her own. Yeah. I just didn't want to jump in if there was more to explain, that was all. Oh, uh, no. Okay. You know, I'm more like, put your brain in a metal mm. body and then, like, go to work again. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go to Lisa for a sec. Um, do you think this is a good idea? I mean, no, uh, no disrespect. I know you love or whatever, um, but... Look, I don't know you guys that well, but this whole thing is kind of, um, it's a little taboo, but for a reason, you know, uh... He's a Golgari. That's what he would want. I know a lot of serial killers that would want some stuff too, but we don't give it to them for bad reasons, you know? But this is what the Golgari do. And serial kill... Right, what I'm saying is, just because it's an idea and it's possible doesn't mean we should just do it, you know? It's... Look, I just have seen this gone very bad before. If we bring him back and it's not, um, if it doesn't suit him mentally, he will unravel quickly. And even if it does, he will unravel eventually anyway. Do you know what I mean? You, you can only buy so much this happened to a Golgari before. Uh, not something I've witnessed personally because it's something frowned upon, but the stories are very clear and the recounts are pretty much everywhere. It's just not something you do. You would have probably heard a story of a Golgari um, lich who actually was because the Golgari are recycling. Mm. They're like a, a waste disposal yes, and yeah. repurposing just reuse. Um, guild. Um, and one of the things that they do is corpse recycling. Right, That's what rot farms effectively are. Um, you weren't part of it, but you knew that your father actually took part in a raid ah. that had to put down one such underrealm lich because he was recycling people early. Ah. When there were very old people who had become like in invalids or or people who were like sick or seriously injured, he's, he he stopped being able to see the difference. I the understand. Value. Uh, life was such a fleeting thing, and he had mm. so much unlife. He had been undead for so long that yes, life he just stopped less. processing it, and so he was—he didn't even see what he was doing wrong. He, he just thought you. he was being efficient, and so your father had to put down one such Golgari. It happens from time to time. My um, my father had to had to raid someone who was uh, practicing such things, and to be honest, uh, it wasn't very pretty. You see, when their minds are affected. They don't behave in a way that they would normally behave. They do dark things without understanding but what Gregory impact that But Gregory seems perfectly has. fine. I understand that Gregory seems perfectly fine, but I don't know what he's dipped into or has access to. I just know what we have access to, and that is not enough to do what you want to do long term. I'm not saying no, but if you love him and care about who he is, I would hate to see you witness him become something you don't love. And perhaps what you're suggesting is possible, but I would exercise caution on the amount of time you exercise him, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna come up behind you, like just brushing each your leg. And um, like, like, I know we know Gregory, but like Andy's mom, and, like, your dad, you don't seem very happy to be around for a very, very long time. And I, and I don't know if I'd want to be around for as long as they are. But but maybe we can do something, there. at least to bring him back for, like, a good amount of time. Like, I don't want Andy gone. And I found you a history for, like, any, oh, for any, like, bedtime stories that granny or grandpa like, told me about people like I, I'm just imagining like, if there's any um, Ravnica like fairy tales about different people yeah. and, like Sleeping Beauty or like Cinderella but in, it's pretty sad 
Yeah, I'm sure that, uh, yeah, go ahead and roll a, a history check real quick. Fine. 19 plus, uh, I guess, plus oh, 506. I'm just checking out. Uh, history is, oh no, plus three, so 22. All right. Um, there are most certainly um, stories aplenty of the downsides of immortality. Um, one of the things that you kind of know now that you're not a child and you are an adult yes. is that the guilds that tell those stories to their children are coincidentally, perhaps, all of the guilds that don't have access to it. Oh. <laughs> um, so there could be a pretty heavy dose of bias involved yeah. where all of the ones that can extend their lives do so very readily, even though they know that those stories are out there. Yeah. Um, but yes, as far as the is it are concerned, uh, you growing up so close to the myths, um, you know that almost every guild that is bound to live a natural life seems to think that there is something superior in it. It's why they even use like your natural life. Because the whole framing of the question is different. A Golgari doesn't see it as unnatural. They see it as a continuation of, of the natural form. Right? They don't see it as a break in the chain, whereas other people see it as a perversion. So you're kind of running into the idea that yeah. it's like, oh yeah, obviously the, these people who don't have access to this super cool thing are saying that it's super yeah. shit. Okay. Makes sense. Cool. So I'll just, mm. I'll just yeah. hold you and like kind of try and help and be there for you as well as like for Forrest. Okay. I just wish I would have known what he wanted, but I'm, me too. I'm just gonna look up at Hewitt and yell out, We did it! We defeated your dread slag! We scared everybody off in the whole arena! Well doing it, so I mean pretty fantastic, but we lost one, so I don't really see how we can continue on with our arrangement. And when you say that, you realize that they right. aren't kind of paying attention to you guys and, and just watching and waiting at, at your convenience to hear what you have to say for the next part. They are involved in a very heated conversation. There is quite... A, you guys are having your conversation between yourselves. Mm. So are they. And it's getting involved. There is a lot of... Um, Hmm. There are like Jibba -jibba. support staff and aides. While all the audience has left, there are a surprising number of people who are just dressed as Rakdosians are, but they all have weapons and they're willing to use them. But they're talking about how it's like, okay, well, these three uh, are the worthy ones. So you can hear that Hewitt is saying, these three are the worthy ones, so I have to fight these three. Clearly the other one wasn't worthy yeah. of my time. And so the challenge still stands. Right. And then, <laughs> meanwhile, Judith is like, no, 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 that's not how this works. Those four were the odds that we agreed to. We'll find a fourth. And he's like, well, uh, how about this? If you're going to find a fourth, why don't we just get that guy back? Nyasser is there going, no, nah, that one's clearly pretty weak. We don't want that one back. We can hire a fourth. <laughs> he's like, well, no, no, no. He lasted a decent while. He's a tough physical specialist. We can hear this? His will is weak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, like, these guys are like arguing back and forth, trying to like fandangle their deal to see who gets the upper hand. Because Hewitt is like, is, I will fight three people rather than four. Yeah, And the rest oh, of the group is like, yeah. you're not walking away with our armies it, for like half of what they're is, worth. So they're trying to make it so that... They're Enough! <laughs> the deal was for all of us! All right. All right. Rake, when you have enough respect, you'll find that you don't have to yell to have people listen to you. We'll do four. But we'll do these four. Everyone in agreement. <laughs> and he kind of looks, and he's got a few people that are with him. Um, I'm going to start they looking all around. They have their own groups kind of all huddled around. Things are, like, on the edge of breaking out. But... I'm just going to start looking around a little bit panicked, like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah, so Judith goes... All right. Yeah. The deal. The deal was four. And it was these four. We'll... Stick to it in its strictest sense. How's that? But who's paying for him? <laughs> and to that, he would kind of go, 
Alright, alright. I'll pay to bring him back. It's only sporting, I suppose. Um, someone fetch a ghost broker and uh, <laughs> have them carry the body to my rooms. Um, we'll deal with this in a more private location. Now, are we doing this immediately after he comes back? Don't leave up? my body alone with Hewitt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not leaving your body alone with Hewitt. Oh, God. <laughs> He's walking real funny. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> 100% not leaving here. Yeah. Hewitt. So he says, he, he starts talking to them about, like, how soon after he comes back are we going to have our fight? And they're, and Nyas are just like, no, 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 we know that as soon as someone comes back, they need a little time before their muscles come back under their control. Besides, that man's been dead and his soul's been there for more than a minute. So he's, like, talking about all the logistics of you coming back. So eventually, Jury goes, how about a day? A day sound fair for everyone? And so, eventually, it seems like they work it out between them. There are a whole bunch of nods, nods, handshakes. Nice. And Hewitt looks back down into the pit. Very well. Your challenge is accepted. The four of you will face me tomorrow, after your friend is recovered. And I get the pleasure of bringing him back. I'm going to go with you. I was expecting you to. Come, come. Can I come to you? This seems really interesting. At least for scientific purposes. And oh, and then if that doesn't work, and then I'll just be like, and I'm also Cerulean's bodyguard. It is. Persuasion roll. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and do a persuasion. The can DC I? is quite high. Oh, wait, can I do like my um, fire bolts and like, <laughs> like uh, just at the wall, like no one's in here. Like yes. I'm just going to shoot like a fire Mech. bolt. And so you are at disadvantage. <laughs> 18 plus 5 for the hit for the fireball. But you are a disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> you. Who are you throwing a fireball at? No, I'm she's doing a dodge like, for power. Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. <laughs> I'm strong. 11 plus and then persuasion? Or deception? It would be persuasion. Persuasion. Then plus 5. 16? 17. No, 16, sorry. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, we're actually. If you had just asked, he probably would have been like, okay. But as soon as you're like, I want to come with you. Instead <laughs> of like making fire <laughs> and explosions, he's like, oh, no, the first no, no absolutely not. <laughs> <sighs> yes, things will be interesting, and I understand you wanting to be there, but I have no interest in you being there. I can take off my ring, it won't work then. No. It won't be. Oh. Yes, your mouth is still making noise. <laughs> All right. I'm just Everyone sorry, Tink. Their... Your mouth is making noise. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, <laughs> she being sassy uh, with you? <laughs> well, while they're talking, would you say the total interaction, including the fireballs and everything after the fight, would be about 60 seconds or more? Yeah, between all of this? Yeah. Like, yeah. everything that's been going yeah. on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna do Know Your Enemy. It takes a minute, but it just lets me, just through observation, observe and mm -hmm. study someone, but it specifically allows me to know, uh, in relation to my own, and compare the two, their strength score, dex score, constitution levels, armor class, current HP, total class levels, if any, and fighter class, if any. All of that, or one? one? I thought it said all of it. Yeah, compared to your own. Can learn the information about his capabilities compared to your own, including so strength score, dex score, constitution score, armor class, current HP level, total number of classes, and fighter class, oh, if any. So it takes one minute board. to do. Oh, just compared to yourself? Mm -hmm. Yes, so yeah, if, right. if I have a strength of 10 and he has a strength of whatever, I get to know our two strengths. At least that's the way mm -hmm. it's worded, but if you feel like something else is more appropriate, that's cool, but no, it's not too, too, so too watered down. So, strength is lower, his dexterity is higher. Okay. Um, his constitution is higher, uh, unless you have... What's your con? Uh, just give you this there. All right. So, strength is lower, dex is higher, con is higher, intelligence is higher, wisdom is the same. No, no it's, it's his is just higher, and charisma is higher. Uh, his okay. armor is lower than yours. Um... What else was it? Hit points. Uh, hit points. His Current. hit points are higher. Yeah. Does it say relevant Level. to my own in that one, or does it say... Oh, I had total levels as well, I know. Yes. Um, do you know what class? Because um, he, he has it says, none of So it says specifically total class levels and current HP. Uh, if 
any fighter classes as well. So if he has no fighter. No, okay, but it says total class levels, if any. I'm assuming he has class levels? Yes. Okay. As like a rogue. Okay. That, that would be okay. a class level, right? It, it like says total. I don't know if I want to read it just yeah. to make sure, because I might get more out of this than sure, you intend, intend or vice versa the other way. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, the whole time he is arguing with his peers, and and when he's talking down to you guys, uh, you get to see him kind of in a few different environments, and you can see that he's talking to the three different, um, like, troop leaders in different ways. You get to study the way he holds himself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you end up finding out that this guy is pretty much a, like, a damn near peak physical specimen. Okay. Um, yeah. He, he isn't bulging with muscle because it's probably not actually what's most physically Impressive attractive. Yeah. But he is as strong as the most sexually attractive attractive male he's, he's found be. the threshold of like yes, where hotness hit, depre- it, depreciates and he's like no it's good yes, enough it's at like the gym. perfect level he's like a gymnast rather than a bodybuilder that vain mm-hmm. bastard but plus, yeah plus he has that effect about him where you even think that he's better than he is as yeah. well yeah, so yeah, actually, yeah. Man, I don't know cool. yeah the, the guy you, you kind of look at him and you're like ha, I can throw a rock further than he can yeah and on the rest of it you're like Pfft. He's stupid though. <laughs> he's, you're just like, man, this guy's a really, uh, he's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of yeah. cute too. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, the the three of them kind of look to him, and their business is concluded. Um, no one seems all that happy. In fact, you can see that as the three of them get up, um, and they and they go to leave, Judith kind of stops and turns to him and goes. By the way, it is these four. So if one of them happens to die in the middle of the night, you'll just be paying to bring the other one back. And then it'll be another day. <laughs> so it's so she's kind of taken into account that uh, if he tries to have any of you guys assassinated in your sleeps, that you'll still be there for the fight at the nice. end of the day. Okay. <laughs> yes, for whatever consolation that is to you. Yeah. But yeah, so the three people all kind of separate and go their own ways, and Hewitt is just kind of looking over at you guys. Do you know the way back to my chambers? I do. Good. I'll see you there. Okay. And he just kind of snaps and turns away and starts to walk up, and you can see that uh, waiting for him at the top of the stairs just before he leaves the kind of destroyed pit, and a bunch of workers start coming in to try to fix it up, there is a acolyte who is clearly a cleric of... Uh, or Zova, the Church of Deals. Mm-hmm. Um, so he is now talking to a representative from the from that guild to see about fetching your soul back. <laughs> nice. Awesome. You guys, um, you are brought back to Hewitt's chambers, um, as well as the body, and you accompany it for the whole time, I assume? Yeah. Cool. So <laughs> your body is, like, grabbed and brought over and... Um, There's going to be no weird shit happening to your body. <laughs> I don't know. I'll find out. <laughs> I don't know. You guys will probably be doing it on my body for some reason. <laughs> Who knows, guys? Who knows? <laughs> the door opens, and the people carrying uh, Andy's body, they, like, enter the room, and you can hear Hewitt before you see him go, mm. and then you walk through, and he's like, ugh. <laughs> Spoiled fun, but they throw his body onto a couch. He's like, no, no. He's shit himself. Put him in the tub. Come on, man. <laughs> he died. <laughs> right? So, so they, they pick you up off the couch and throw you in the tub. Um, but yeah, so uh, is there anything that you guys are doing before we get into what Zarelia is going to have to work out as far as how she's going to pay to have, have a money. <laughs> what are you guys doing? You guys aren't allowed in... Hewitt's private quarters. You're not with Zarelia or Andy's body. We're still in the main arena area. Kind yeah. Of thing. I'm gonna see if I can find. Do we have a, like access to some stores or anything around? Uh, yeah. If you guys are to going to leave the Blood Crypt, there are a whole bunch of different I'm stores look for and some things that you can do something. Okay. Uh, gonna, you can access. Do you remember here. when he did that bet? that guy in the arena. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The guy who like ran away with your money? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go look for him because I assume that he probably works in the arena. Because he was just a like, guy in the arena. You're gonna go look for him? Well, I'm just gonna like go up to the main people that are working there and like give a vague like 
this is the description of the guy. Like, if he has any scars, like, sweet, wholesome things. things. He's got a whole day. <laughs> all, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, and you're doing this by yourself? Or? Yes, so I'm going to be very intimidating. <laughs> That's I, the opposite. <laughs> I, no, no, not to these people. When I finally find him, I'm going to be super intimidating oh. for him. Gotcha. He is going to be terrified of this tiny little creature that's after him that like somehow beat this massive creature because um, I'm sure he watched. All right. I'm going to have you do a series of rolls. And if you can succeed um, a few of these, then then we'll we'll follow it up first. And if you die, Hugh, it's paying. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to show, to now literally can do whatever she wants. Yes. With uh, dying included to her. Yeah. It's, it's a shame that you aren't hearing the details of. <laughs> oh, like that. Oh, do what okay. You will. She's still gonna go like so close to like if she is about to die, she will like. First, I'm gonna need you to roll an insight. Okay. This one, the DC is gonna be. Oh, I got a 10 plus, and then awesome. plus one, yeah. So, you easily start to make your way out of the fairgrounds, back up the uh, like the demon's vestibule, that, that long staircase, uh, the demon's throat, back towards the area of the carnarium, where you start uh, kind of looking at who might know uh, who this guy is and where he's working out of. You find someone who's like a troop leader who organizes the different laborers and things like that. Uh, I'm going to need you to either do deception or persuasion or intimidation to see if you can get this guy to cough up where this worker is. I'm just gonna watch. <laughs> see if she handles herself. <laughs> oh, you're sneaking behind, like, watching from a distance. What did the, can, you, can you tell me roughly what the guy looked like? Um... He was, was some, he a he human? He looked like a man? <laughs> no, <laughs> if, if, if I'm doing a deception... I'm deceiving possibly to be his child that's like crying and going over to his- so, Oh, no, you're trying to be like, I lost my I daddy think, to people? I oh, think that's so that, funny. Like, there's this map that I think yeah. is a circus ground. I am so excited that there's rides and everything. All right. So <laughs> me running over, crying my eyes out. So the man like, is old enough that he could have a child. I yeah. lost my daddy. <laughs> like, All right. You're getting okay. haunted. You, know, yeah. like that. That's you could do a deception, deception. at advantage. Because yeah. you're oh. a small crying- Girl nice. child. Yeah. Lisa, where are you? If I need to, I are we all walking to together? Because like, I was thinking of with her. She's with her dad. I'm not left. Like, like, okay, I was going to say, like, feet and are, you're like, with your dad. Busty right? and feminine, yeah. like younger. <laughs> then, yes, I, I was going to either be with you or with her, but if you're going with your dad. Plus five. No, dirty 20. Wow. All right. For being a dirty lost child. So, <laughs> it turns out that that is the weakness <laughs> of a great many men is small crying girls <laughs> just will like screech asking for to. things frantically. <laughs> oh, I will, she will screech if she has to. Yeah. She'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> every time he says something that isn't like, oh, I don't know where he is, she'll just go like, get worse. Yeah, so he is like, oh my God, okay, I think I know who you're talking about. Um, it's been a, a while. I think I know where he's at. So he grabs your hand, he's gonna show you. <laughs> So, <laughs> so uh, he ends up walking you over until eventually you get to this worker and uh, you find out that this worker is now kind of, he's got newer clothes, he, he smells better than you remember, uh, he's looking a little bit fancier. Sons of bitches stole money. Um, before we get up to him, once I can see him, I will, I will just... Um, <laughs> With I assume that I've got snotty at this point. Because <laughs> she is fully getting into the row. When she sees the guy, she is going to hug the guy that was helping her, rubbing her face in his clothing, <laughs> and be like, thank you so much, thank you so much. And then she'll start walking over to her dad. Her dad. So he's just like, hoping, hey. hoping that he's like, you, you, and then runs away. Oh, yeah. I rolled a 17 oh, yeah. on my on my stealth, oh, and her passive is 11. So <laughs> he doesn't see me as I put on like a little fruit hat or something around the corner and start sharpening my axe or something. You throw on a minotaur hood, which is like a massive <laughs> bowl of fabric. Sweet, I like it. Is there a lot of people in the area? Uh, well, not really, because the guy is working. Okay, cool. So nice. you kind of snot up the guy's yeah. tunic, and I he's like, ah, oh, okay, well, get it dotted over with, and he kind of peels you off, and he goes to continue doing his stuff, because the games are continuing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see that he's kind of, like, talking to another worker, mm -hmm. who, and they've got, like, some people in a cage, 
uh, and and he's just talking to the other guys like yeah no, these these new sh- like leather shoes oh man they're so much more comfortable now I don't get blisters while I'm doing these long shifts and he's just <laughs> nice. I'll take off my cloak and stuff and like start sparking up as I just stomp right over there mm-hmm. looking right up at the guy and just stare at him yeah did you see me when what in the big huge area in the arena that massive monster that I bet you I could beat do you remember do we get to watch the games no man we don't get to watch the games no sorry I don't know you Thing's gonna jump up and grab his collar and pull him down to be his height. <laughs> Taser. height. You don't so much pull him down as you jump yeah. off the floor to grab him, and so gravity pulls Yo, him yeah, down. Oh yeah, gravity pulls us down. Like, it's not even it's not even really an attack. It's just like a grab and like pull right. down. Like if he's wearing a tie or something, I'm gonna pull you that. Pull him down. Yeah. yeah. And I know that you remember me. Um, do, Where's my big buddy? Do an insight. Do an insight. <laughs> 17 plus, no! plus 1, 18. Alright. You, he he's like, you're crazy. I don't know who the hell you are. I know you know me. <laughs> and you can tell that he like, he does know that you know. It's just, the oh, jig yeah. is up. So he's like, alright, what so if I told sorry. you I don't have the money? <laughs> you're gonna get it for me. What if I told you that's kind of like impossible? I don't uh, make no, much money No, it's not impossible. You you're wearing all the clothes. I bet you built more than my, my money. What? Where's my money, didn't you? You're those air Baltics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have more, don't you? I'm sure you have more. You do not steal money saying that you are the person that's in charge of bets. Do you know, like, where I work? I work in the Gore House. I bring dangerous animals in, like, half ass cages into an arena where people die regularly. Yeah, and you thought I'm that you I'm not guaranteed could... to live out the week. Of course I spent the money. Do you thought that you could just take my money? And take advantage of me. I was having He fun. looks at his buddy and the buddy's like, it was a good call at the time, man. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna start walking him and pointing out the shops. Where did you buy all these things? You're oh. returning it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm returning you to return it. <laughs> you find that at a certain point, like, he he goes to just stand up because he's not letting you walk him <laughs> bent over anymore and you can't really stop him from standing up so you just you're holding on to like his belt and just oh, yeah. walking him from stall oh yeah stall. I'm walking through the stall seeing like pointing out the shops being like which one did you buy that shirt in they see you walking him up they see your face they see his face and just no refunds <laughs> turn it around we don't want you here. No. Mm-mm. Ain't happening here. Do they say no free funds on any part of the store? <laughs> she will be assured. They she see what's about to happen. They're like, no. My money, my money. That's your own problem. Don't say it anywhere on the store. No refunds. Don't have to. I make the rules. No refunds. I'm going to look through the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna if if the cat does the counter face the window so the guy at the window can yeah. see me but she can't. I'm gonna just use And these are like stalls. These are the stalls that are built into the ring around the Carnarium arena. So it's not like closed up shop fronts and things like I'm, that. I'm gonna use an intimidation check as I look at her and I look at my long sword, and then I'm gonna look at him and I'm just gonna keep making the rounds and giving him a little nod mm-hmm. like the answer is yes. Alright. And I'm gonna do it with my superiority dice and my special ability. All right. Now, Just if look. you're going to do this intimidation, yeah. um, you're going to, while at range... I'm outside the window. All right. I mean, he can shoot through his own window. Roll okay. it up, roll it up. Okay. So you're, like, okay. right behind her. Oh, no, he's in the window, because I'm, okay. like, in the store. Hold on. You see this? Like... How are your hands always so dirty? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do before oh, this? <laughs> Plus, uh, so that's 21 plus 8, 29. All right. With the 29, she's like, no, no, I know where this is going. Dang Still it hiding from her Dang with my... Yeah, because I don't even know he's there. Yeah, <laughs> so then you appear and you're just like, is this a sword in my hand? What, the, what am I going to do with a sword in my hand? And you're just like, I'm like, 
I know where this is going. All right. <laughs> so, like, and then, okay, and then okay. once I see him give the nod, I'm just gonna put my sword away and step back, turn around, and keep an eye, but like hide from her. Yeah. All right. I still don't know he's there. I think it's all me. <laughs> yeah, you do. Now, now, Saren. Yeah. This could go on for a while because there are a few oh, yeah. stalls that this guy bought stuff from, and they're gonna go like, "Oh yeah, that's an intimidating guy," and they're gonna refund, but not all of what he no. paid, and then he's gonna say something back and forth. We're gonna Has do. Has he got some money on him as well? <laughs> you you can fleece him for what he's got. It doesn't amount to all that much. No. Um. We're just gonna do. We fast forward. We can a, do a, a, yeah. Just do like your highest charisma based roll. Okay. Nineteen plus five. Ooh. All right. That's deception. It Boring. takes you. Yeah. A day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it takes you one day, and just, you are just like this guy's like. I gotta work. I gotta go to work. <laughs> but you go from stall to stall, and every one of them is no refunds, no refunds. Then they refund, and it's half the refund. Then you find out what he paid for. Then you get the full thing. Then you haggle over how used it is, what he's doing. Then you get to a food stall, and it's hard to get <laughs> refunds there. So there's this whole thing. I'm where just gonna get him to buy me a hot dog at this <laughs> stall, and just be like, "You're paying for it." I'll be just like, "Sit down half for the day because I'm hungry," and just at, be like, "You're buying." Yeah. At some point, the man is having to like sell his labor hours. <laughs> So there's like some weird indentured servitude contracts that are going down to pay himself out of debt. Uh, so he's a part-time slave to about a half a dozen people by the end of the day, but you get like 95% of your cash back. Perfect. Well done. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> we can expedite mine real quick. I just want to know if we can get some holy water and some potions. <laughs> Hmm. Mm. Holy water. This would not be the place for Could it. I find a cleric? You could. Can I find some water? You can. I'm going to find me some holy water, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, you find some, um, some like, Azorius law mage, and you're like, you're a law mage. And he's like, oh, yeah. You recognize me? He's like, yeah, yeah, I kind of recognize the get up and the walk. You're not supposed to be here. Why don't you make me up some holy water and I don't tell anyone you've been here? And he's like, fuck, damn, okay. So you extort some cleric into making you some holy Sounds water. Right. But he's a corrupt So he's like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you get Sweet some holy water and you can also wrangle up uh, some, some potions. Yeah, I'd like speculate. to see if there's anything to slow movement speed, uh, delay action, some kind of uh, hold up. You know, do not pass go, skip a turn, something like that. I don't know. Mm. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, we can go over some of that stuff. Uh, you, you can definitely find a few things, and I imagine it's... You can let me know what I found, how much it costs and all that stuff when we get to but Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome! You managed to pick up some equipment. You managed to get your money back at the expense of that thief. And then we come back to you guys, who have the day ahead of you. You have come into Hewitt's room, and Hewitt sits down and goes, All right, here's the deal. I've spoken to the ghost broker. And normally, what, how this works is if it's an unassuming soul, which I thought that his was, I didn't have any real expectation for why anyone would be interested in it. Um, normally, you would pay to have a spirit that is bound to the church find them in Aguram and then pull them back into the body, but it seems that the church actually owns your friend's soul. Hmm. It seems that, um... Why would they own... Well, it seems like someone has sold it to the church. (laughs) And it seems like it's quite pricey. Oh, I bet I know who that was. Hmm. Vinny. (laughs) (laughs) Who is Vinny? (laughs) Yes, considering that there are only certain people who have the authority to sell another soul... I think it comes down to one of two people. And from the sounds of things, me being able to look in on his whole little family drama there in the arena, I can safely assume who it was, too. That bitch. Hmm. Well, at least she got a good prize for him. Yeah. It seems like they were counting on him uh, living out the full extent of his life and unlife and having a rather valuable soul at the end of the day. But it seems... Like he's died before he's really accumulated too much arcane knowledge, any useful skills or informations or secrets and such. And so they are aware that no one really wants him. 
and that this is going to probably be their one and only opportunity to make the cash back. What do you have on me to actually cover this cost? Because I'm afraid that all of my other funds that were available to buy your friend are tied up in my other deal to buy the army. What do I have on me? Hmm. Hmm. Besides a fabulous ladle. <laughs> Let me put it this way. I have a way of stretching for the amount of money it'll take to bring him back for a day. I can lease it for a little while anyway. But I don't like to stretch if I don't want to. What are you going to do to make me stretch? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> What's on offer, Ray? I would say, don't stab me in the back when it comes to the duel, but it seems that our original agreement, which was that, doesn't seem to have actually held much sway over you, considering the conversation I overheard. Now, I didn't trust you naturally anyway, and you can hardly blame me. One, it's in my nature, and two, it turns out you're not trustworthy. But, uh, you know. That little dread slide conversation actually happened to be quite informative. Bell guy. So, <laughs> how about this? He's not here right now, so no one's listening. Hmm. Ah, I want the true Bell Cross. That's what I want. I want your friend here to come back so that you can put him back down in the ground. He's gonna go back there anyway. I can only afford him for a certain amount of time. You want him to come back so that I can kill him? He has to come back to fulfill the deal of our duel. Or of our scrum. I have to bring him back. And he will go away, one way or another. If you beat me, eventually the contract expires and his soul goes back to Aguilar, back to that little ghost quarter blister plane. But you need him to come back. He must come back. That's well, not I'm for not discussion. going to I kill want him. You to kill him before I'm he not goes going to. Time. You need him back. No, 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 no. You're not hearing me. Remember how you. I got on this whole train of thought thinking I'm going to fight four talented people and I'm going to bring these other people in on this deal because little do they know that the odds aren't actually all that stacked against me because my daughter has told me that she's going to side with your old dad and actually betray the friends. Right? That was the original arrangement. Turns out that's not what you had in mind. I want it to be that again. Before I will bring him back. All four of you will show up to fight me. Contract fulfilled. And then, in the fight, before he gets to go, before he gets to taste victory, I want a sweet little girl to be the one who puts him away. It's a lesson I've been trying to teach you from a very young age. With your other friends, I'm trying to teach it to you still. No. Fine, I'll fight you, I'll kill him, and I'll hurt you badly. What else are you going to do for me, then? You have to make it worth my while one way or another. You need him back for this fight. I think you need this fight more than I do. <laughs> what are you going to do for me? <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes, sir, Just think yeah. like pops. Yes, sir, yeah. Go ahead and do an insight. <laughs> she knows that he's <clears throat> BSing. Alright, with an 11, you can't pick up on what it was exactly that you stabbed at, but you could tell that a lot of, like, the bluster and showmanship, he was trying to kind of show this position of strength and get something from you, and as soon as you put up, like, that little bit of fight, you're like, wait, no, he must appear for, you must do this, all of a sudden he's like, mm, yeah, you got me there, <laughs> and you can realize that he can't, his charm doesn't work on you. Normally, he could say that to someone, and they'd be like, sure, and they would pay him what he wanted. 
but it doesn't work on you. So <laughs> you're able to see that, yeah, he doesn't actually have any leverage over you here when he's making these demands. All right, all right. Let's not be unreasonable here. <sighs> I'm going to bring your friend back, and I can... Ah! I can control how long that little contract is. So, I can have him show up for an hour, as if we think the fight is going to go that long. I can have him show up just for the half hour. Oh, no. <laughs> and you can see that he actually gets trapped because Paint the reason corner. No, you sir. guys need the day is because the reviving process. You actually need time to get control mm -hmm. of your body back. You don't get a so, long rest when you're dead? Well, I'm that's why he has I'm to bring kidding. you now. <laughs> yeah. Because if he brought you up right before the mm. fight, you'd be like, oh! <laughs> yeah. Imagine getting they, a good berry and coming already, back. And like, yeah. The other three already <laughs> cut that out as a possibility. Shit. I actually really negotiated well with myself without realizing <laughs> yeah. it. Hmm, no. So he has to bring that. Damn it! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Nice. <laughs> he just caught himself. All right. Busted. Normally it works, for what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to make a little deal now. <laughs> so he kind of gets up and opens a closet, and you can see that in the closet, like, hanging from the post that other, like, uh, outfits are hanging from is the ghost broker from Orzov. And he's like, a deal's a deal, 24 hours. <laughs> so we actually, like, okay, great. <laughs> so, so, uh. There's a, there's a guy in his closet hanging? <laughs> that's where he left him <laughs> for, for a little bit. So he hmm. kind of unties him, and the guy actually leaves the room for a while, and it's just you and your dad for a little bit while the, uh, the priest of Orzov goes and gets everything ready to put the soul back in your body. Yeah. So, it seems fairly obvious to me that I'm not able to bully you into being a lawyer. No. Could I convince you, just out of sheer morality's sake, to be really nice to the person who brought you into the world? Hmm. Have you been really nice to me? In a way that you can't understand, yes. You'll no. know, down I'm... the line. There will come a time where you'll thank me, and I know it's a cliche for parents I'm to going say to that thank you for getting my wings ripped off, thanks. Thank you. I didn't ever give specifics. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay. They, I just kind of hinted generally, and that was then just stepping over a line. But they don't like you. Right. No, nobody does. Because of you. Does Hewitt have wings, by the way? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, Hewitt does not. Ah, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Hmm. Why doesn't he have wings? This is in his final form. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. clears throat> so, uh, Hewitt does not have visible wings. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm just... You see, the thing is... is no An one... apology? Oh, yeah. That I mean, is I a good start. You, you just don't see it yet, Greg. I'm, no one likes you because of me, but you need to understand that no one likes me either. I'm trying to prepare you for a reality that is going to hit you at some point or another. You will eventually find out that you being half demon and all, you getting to outlive everyone, you being immediately and uncontrollably sexually attracted to everyone in your vicinity, is not a recipe for happy social interactions and long-lasting relationships. I'm trying to be nice to you, whether you see it or not. There are lessons that took me a very, very long time to learn, and I experienced a lot more pain than you have in your little life. How old are you? At least over half a millennium now. It's got to be over five centuries at this point. Oh. At, at a certain point, you stop keeping track, really. That seems like too long. Don't you just want to end it? I do, and yet my nature prevents me from doing so. My nature prevents me from doing a great many things. Do you, you see me as some cruel, fickle monster, and you don't realize that that's literally 
what I am and created to be. You, while being half demon, are half something else. You are not a creature entirely of mana. You have free will. That is a gift that I managed to give to you, to someone. It was the nicest thing I've ever done, and you don't seem to appreciate that at all. You don't realize that I'm stuck as what I am. You're being upset with me because I am a demonic creature when I have no choice but to be. I tried to give you something more. I just wish you would have been there when I was younger. I had to go through this all by myself. I'll put it this way. <clears throat> I don't handle little children well. I barely handle adult children well, as you can see. We're still having to figure this out. But You we're don't handle anybody well. What's that? You don't handle anybody well. Hmm. Yeah, true. I don't like them, but I can handle them. Well. You can. Do you want me to just kill you? It's something that I haven't done yet. It's one of the few things. But I could do that for you. On the other hand, you are actually a first for me. You're the source of a great many firsts. So while me dying is a new experience, you seem to be a wellspring for the rest of them. I haven't had a daughter before now. I haven't had to have these great bonding conversations until now. So this is great. <laughs> mm, yeah. Check out this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very novel. It is something I've waited my entire life for. Mm. I hope I live up to the expectation. This anyway. has been nice. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed so this. <laughs> <laughs> well. There's a certain amount of logistics involved with the man coming back from the dead, and I don't think you'll care for it. Your man needs to clean himself up. You can leave now. We'll kill each other tomorrow. Okay. Oh. If you plan on leaving, you're going to need this. And he throws you a Rakdos locket. It is the same um, effects as the Golgari locket that um, Andavarius found in the sewers. Okay. Um, but this one, uh, you can kind of show to bouncers, and it allows you like a certain amount of, it's almost like a VIP pass. Uh, it gives you access to some pretty painfully exclusive places. <laughs> yeah. So if you ever <laughs> leave, you don't have to fight your way back down here. You can just come right back down. Okay. Too bad they don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you guys have a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at that point. Uh, <laughs> at that point the uh, the church member comes in and a price is agreed upon, funds change hands, and you wake up in a tub. Um, yeah, and you don't feel anything. You see things. And it takes you a while to actually realize what's going on because you, there are so many senses that aren't available to you now. You don't smell anything. You don't feel temperature. You barely sense the things that you're touching. And you realize that it's only when you think to concentrate on it that you can. So your sense of touch even only goes so far as when you concentrate specifically on what you want it to be. Otherwise, you're pretty much devoid of damn near anything other than visual input. What did I see? You see the roof of an elaborately appointed private chamber. And uh, you're in a bunch of water as some people are kind of splashing it on you. And he would just kind of, you can see him looking over in the distance, just get to it then. Chop, chop. But I can't hear anything. You, you can't hear unless you force yourself to hear stuff. You have to concentrate on it. So you can see his lips moving, and if you wanted to hear it, then you would catch a couple words in. Your existence, you can only feel as far as you think to. Your body and your soul are kind of mismatched right now. Mm -hmm. well, I'll take myself to get up and try to take a, a deep breath. All right. I'm going to need you to do a 
do a wisdom uh, save. Or uh, this is just a, a wisdom check for your willpower. Natural 20. Yay! Ooh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't even, I don't know what my plus is, but <laughs> that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He says, and then you want to hear the second part, and you go, chomp. Up and over, you clean yourself up and get out. She's waiting for you. <laughs> and with that, you just kind of, as soon as you realize how it works, mm-hmm. you realize that you do this all the time to other people's <laughs> bodies. <laughs> you you do it for strangers, where you will put part of yourself, the uh, mental like, uh, like logistics magic. behind it and the magic of like puppeting a mm-hmm. stranger's corpse. Now it's your own. As disconnected as you are, it's super familiar with it. You know it in and out. You know your strengths and weaknesses. You haven't been dead long. You haven't even started decomposing. So you just... And you can see he's just like, what? what?" He's caught very off guard. You have full functionality as as a kind of temporary lich right now. Do I have any memories of what's happened since uh, I went down? Ah, um, yes. You, (laughs) when your soul kind of left your body, Mm -hmm. it was when your father said, like, I'm going to die soon, and you're going to live for a lot longer than I will. But if you die, by the time I see you in Agarim, it'll be like the blink of an eye. We can just be together that much sooner. And that's what kind of convinced you to let yourself go, is to just kind of skip life and get to a comfortable afterlife with your dad. Um, So when you went there, you actually saw a whole bunch of other kind of floating, unclaimed spirits and silent men and things like that, uh, different ones that are bound to the Church of Orzov or uh, Selesnian guilds or even the Azorius use some of them as functionaries. Yeah. But yeah, you actually temporarily popped into that space for what seems like a, a fraction of a second. Oh yeah, that's it. Just yeah. To get my bearings in there. Well, time flows extremely yeah. differently. And when you're dead, you lack almost any outer initiative at all, <laughs> unless someone else from an actual, like, a, from the living world kind of compels you into interacting with it. Mm-hmm. In and of itself, it's just like a blank realm of the dead waiting. They're just potential, mm-hmm. but they don't act of their own will. Unless you want something bad enough, are you looking for something? Well, I guess being dead, first thing I would look for is maybe family members that have since died, that kind of thing. All right, yeah, wow. Grandma, right? <laughs> Annabelle? Yes. In the... Oh, oh, oh. Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> this blink of an eye that you are gone, yeah. you manage to have what seems like years worth of conversations with different dead family members that you aren't even aware of uh, because you are freshly dead so you still have some like shred of initiative compared to all of the things around you that are pretty much just motionless and aimless and so you're able to seek out like the, the dead ghost of a beetle <laughs> of Annabelle <laughs> in Agarum? <laughs> I don't know if that's in the lore of animals <laughs> that can go there or uh, what boy would you I have a contract for that guy. Man. Is it Aragorn? Okay. No, but it's not just ones that have contracts that oh, yeah. go to Aragorn. Oh no, no. Um, those are the ones that are most easily retrievable and are bound to the call of the Orza. Oh, the rest okay. of them can kind of float around. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you have like a whole <laughs> while to spend with different dead family members. You have some uh, some closer brothers and things and yeah. sisters, uh, ones who have been sold before you. Um, and you realize that pretty much it seems your mother has made a habit of selling the souls of her children for a little bit of a temporary boost in cash. Um, she can't make use of your souls afterwards anyway, so... Yeah. Sorry for interrupting, but do we all, like, have the knowledge of Agarim and stuff like that? Yes, there was actually a big thing with the okay. uh, Agarim where Zadok, who was the head... He was a psychic vampire who was the head of the Demir Guild. Back when it was a secret, it was revealed, which is what broke the Guild Pack, and it was because oh. they killed him and his spirit was bound to Grand Arbiter Augustine that he used him as an assassin to kill uh, Razia, who was the head of the Boros Guild. There was a whole shit ton of stuff yeah. that happened based on the Ghost Quarter. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, so pretty much Thank everyone you. kind of has a little bit of base knowledge about it. Thank you. 
I go to my dead relatives <laughs> yeah and get a kind of recap of what's going on and oh I'm dead now oh, great <laughs> yeah and I'm in uh, undead life of servitude to the Orzhov. Yeah, so while you're having a conversation with all your relatives, mm. you pretty much get the same response a couple sentences in when they start to lose that little bright energy mm. that they get from you and they eventually go, eh, it's not all bad. <laughs> Almost every ghost you speak to goes, eh, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. <laughs> Before they just drift into oh, the again. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. This is bad. <laughs> you go, I don't want to be here. <laughs> and you wake up in the tub. <laughs> oh, did I do that? <laughs> Uh, and I see Hewitt. Yes, and a, you're in a bathtub filled with water with servants who are cleaning you off because he assumes that you're not going to have control of your body for a while. So they're like lifting your leg and scrubbing. And, and then you just stab Bo up. <laughs> nice. I, I will just be completely confused and just out of my wits. <laughs> Be completely nonplussed on what's, what's just happened as my soul has been ripped from this other realm that I've spent a minute or a lifetime I have no idea in. <laughs> yes. And yeah, everyone's there, so it's. Oh, and I'll just cop up all this blood and bile. Vile? Vile? Yeah. Vile, bile. <laughs> uh, where, where am I? What's happened? You're in my chambers. You're alive. Who it? God, I'll reach for uh, my dagger. <laughs> you, you're just not there. You're like, you, you don't have one, you realize you're naked. You're being Unless you're washed. Captain Jack Well, then I reach for something. <laughs> you reach for a water jug. Yeah. It's just being, like, the water is being poured onto you, so you're like, Ugh. so you have a nice. jug half and full will, of water. I will hold it up to his neck. <laughs> <laughs> you climb out of the tub, and he's like, whoa, uh, what? And you can see that you're catching him completely off guard by being able to move. Yeah, and I'll just like walk up, all the water slip down. out of the tub and just like lay on my gas. I'm like, where, where are the others? What have you done with them? If where am I? I've been through this, I think, twice now. You're in my room. I want you out of my room. You're cleaned up. You just need to dry off and go and see Rake. She's out there. Rake? He means Aurelia? I'll push him off. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do that thing where you push, and he's like, what? <laughs> you're still, like, not quite able to force him up, and he has really good balance. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. I'll be completely unbalanced and yeah. uh, start shambling my way out the door. Zoelia! Zoelia! <laughs> and I'm trying to move every part as I have to focus on every leg as I'm going. It's, now, remember, you're... It's, yeah, it's more of the problem of your soul recently being, like, re-put back in, mm -hmm. but you're actually not nearly so bad at this as most people are. You're actually able to, you kind of have, like, a zombie-like mm -hmm. shamble to you, but you're able to move and interact with things, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you pop out into the hallway, and you see, you see, <laughs> um, Andavarius. Okay, um... I will just kind of run over under, like grab him by the arm, put him, put it over my shoulder, yeah, and kind of prop him up. Into you. What, what happened? What? You. I'm back. Yeah, you died. I did. It was that slag. It got me. What happened? The slag got me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't see what it did to you. Uh, you, you turned into. My mother and father and showed me horrible things. They just kept ripping on me for a long time. Hit <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> me to death. <laughs> he did. He did. And then I, I found myself in this weird place with all these other spirits of my relatives. They apparently, we're all being held hostage by the Orzovs. They own our souls now. I heard that. <sighs> Veldara. <laughs> yes. Anyways, how you been? <laughs> um, I've been in mourning. Um, I think we should probably get you some clothes. Maybe get your armor back on. Yeah, this is yeah, fashion, but you let chilly. him here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You were supposed to get dressed before you leave the room. He's like, hey. <laughs> throws the clothes out, which is just like, <laughs> it's like someone throwing wet sod just onto a floor. Ah, careful with that. <laughs> And the door is closed. <laughs> I can help you get dressed. Thank you. <laughs> that is like the most romantic thing to do when someone has armor in D&D. &D. 
Yeah. <laughs> just help them get dressed. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she. It's unfortunate your sheep costume did not make it. Oh, that's okay. Never really served much of a purpose, anyways. <laughs> um, your. They saw right through it. <laughs> your beetle was eating you. Well, yes, that's what he's supposed to do when I die. That's kind of his job, is to return me naturally uh, to the ground. Okay, it was really weird Through to his see. poo. I see you didn't let him do that. Thank you, I guess, if I'm back. Um, Where is Gaston? Gaston? When you did touch yeah. your chest, by the way, yeah. um, you noticed that there isn't just, like, a small bunch of, like, nibbling, mm. and, like, picked at tissue. Mm. Uh, Gaston didn't get deep, but it doesn't hurt. Mm. You can't feel it. Yeah. And you also notice that your your like chest isn't rising and falling, and you don't have a heartbeat. Uh oh. Meh. <laughs> hmm. Something wrong. You feel that? I'll oh, put your hand. It's nothing. I don't feel anything. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> I see you survived, so I guess you are one. Yes, we won. We won, Amy. We won. You're not there. I know, but I'm there in spirit. <laughs> Take credit first. Yeah. <laughs> we all won. Well, I think we spooked the arena, though everybody left. That's great. So, I guess... Um, oh, oh, God. Oh. We, we have a day. It really hurts. We still have to fight Hewitt tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, we fight him now. It's right there. You're not strong enough. Hit me. You're, you can't. Your oh, arms I are spaghetti. Wanna... Oh, you got, no. you just, not, you're not ready. Yeah, I didn't know uh, my mother, she sold my soul to the Uzov. And all my brothers and sisters that have passed, they're all they're sitting there, there waiting, serving forever. Is there a way to release their souls? I don't know, but if I have enough time, I'll, I'll definitely try. I just can't believe she would do that. I knew her family wasn't doing so well financially, and I know she had this, got this money somehow. I thought her, her wares were doing better or something. This, this is low even for her. She's kind of a monster. Coming from one monster, she's I'm more of a monster to get that. than me. Mm. Uh, I'm back now. Uh, Do you want to go fuck her up? I, I don't feel like I'm all there. <laughs> like a part of me is missing. I think... I don't think it's meant to last. So whatever we do, we have to do it fast. Maybe see Grigory. I bet, I bet he can help. He seems to know a lot about this. Is that something you want? I wasn't sure. Uh, Baltic talked a lot and to think about black magic and how you might not come back the same. I don't feel but the same. You are. You are a Golgari, so I thought that's what you would want, but I don't. I do. I do want my second life. Maybe even a third. <laughs> but not like this. I need help. I will help you, whatever you need. I think for, but we gotta do what we came here to do. Get these Rakdos jackasses on our side. Maybe then we can go break the vaults of the Ozov. Free my family. <laughs> hey. Plot I am in. Can you help me? I will help you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll give you a big hug. I will hug him back. <laughs> <laughs> Squish. Yeah, there's... Is it comforting? Oh, it I hope that? it's comforting. I don't know if I feel comfort. <laughs> that, that's the thing that you notice, actually. And it, it's stri- When she mentions that a lot of liches seem to go a certain way and... Uh, Baltic was advising against mm-hmm. it that they live such solitary, like, individual existences that they become the center of that world and nothing outside of it really matters. 
you realize that they must be missing something. Because while you cannot feel your body, you can feel the emotional comfort of someone who cares for you. As we you are hugging, feel a cup, uh, hugging hug. there, I will oh. focus my energy to get some kind of feeling in the extremities on my chest against her chest. Try to feel her heartbeat and kind of try to embrace that as my own or something, just to feel something. Taking her heart is your own. I'll just press my body against him real, real hard. Oh. Mood lighting. How does, how does that feel? That feels pretty good. Actually, <laughs> I kind of feel a little warmer. You know, it felt like an eternity. I was lost in Agarum. But still, what kept coming back to me was you and your music, the last thing I heard before I died. And I kept feeling sorry for such a wasted life. I didn't do anything. I never made any connections with anyone. I never accomplished any great deeds. I never fell in love. But still you. You were there. Stop. <laughs> oh. All I saw. Would you maybe spend my last night with me? Beside me? In my bed? Of course. I love you. I'll give you a big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Without having to concentrate on it, or put any real thought into it, your heart does a couple extra little beats. Oh, did you feel that? <laughs> I'm a real boy. It wasn't my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but it was my pulse. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> We rush to the nearest room. (laughs) (laughs) You guys leave the blood crypt and Hewitt's stomping rounds behind. You have a day. You have some things you want to get done. There is a place that you know that you can take him, and now you know that he actually wants to stick around. He has a reason where he didn't necessarily have one before. It's going to be a busy day, and you're going to need to leave Actos territory to get to it. You're going to need to find Greg. But that's Ravnica for you. <gasps> no, we can't Next there. Oh my God. Short break. Come right back. Yeah. We're gonna have a short break. Oh yeah. We're gonna get back into it. And then we're These gonna kill some stuff. Trying to see what's going on. Yeah. Apparently, they're gonna attack the Orza. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, if, if, if my thing gets cut off, so I didn't have a full day, I'm far with leaving money. Gregory <laughs> probably has plans yeah. to do this anyway. Mm-hmm. We'll find out in like yeah. ten minutes or yeah. something. Yeah. Okay, all right, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming back with us. It's so good to be back. Yeah, great we'll see you shortly. <laughs> Bye. Bye.